but yeah, I don't, I'm not that guy. I'm not a sports guy. I mean, I just wasn't brought up believing in it. And, um, but there's still part of me, it's weird, I'm 49. There's still part of me that if I see like four high school guys wearing varsity jackets, there's still part of my brain that thinks, oh fuck, be cool, just be cool. <laughs> I'm not even on their radar. I mean like, unless it's for one of them to say, why is that old guy acting weird? You know, and in my brain, I'm like, leave me alone. I'm just going to my locker. I'm just going to my locker. <laughs> but okay, let's get to sports. I'm not a sports guy for a very specific reason. I also think I'm, I'm a comedian for a very specific reason. And it has to do with my parents, because they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> um, look, if your parents ever sent you to more than one summer camp in the summer, it wasn't about you having a good time. Um, <laughs> they wanted you out of the house. They didn't want to deal with you anymore. And they'll try to push it off on you, like, you need to learn new things. They're like, when is a Jewish kid gonna need to ride a horse? Seriously, <laughs> when am I gonna need to ride a horse? What situation will I ever be in where I'm like, thank God I went to that camp where they all made fun of me because I can ride this horse right out of here. <laughs> My mother also found me a guitar teacher that was a, a guy who was married. There was these two Christian hippies, little chubby Christian hippies. And they would come, they would pick me up at school, they would take me to swim practice, they would take me out to dinner, and then they'd take me home to their house and teach me guitar. And my mother would say, how was your guitar lesson? And I would say, with my other parents, it was fine. <laughs> my mother is a professional anorexic. And I say that, I say that because it's her job. It's not, it's not a sickness. She manages it. If you were to ask my mother, what do you do for, for a hobby? She would say, I maintain a weight of 116 pounds. And you would say, that's your life? Yes, that's uh, all my life goes into that. So that's my mom. I thought it'd be funnier. But I, because uh, <laughs> this next part really needs a buffer. I really, <laughs> I think for the first nine years of my life, I was a fat kid. And I really believe my mother just saw me as some sort of weird extension of her fat. And I, I think that she thought if she could just stop eating, that maybe the kid would disappear. <laughs> oh. I can't frame that any funnier. <laughs> it, the, but, just saying at that time made me hurt a little bit. Let's get to the funny part. At some point, my mother decided maybe we should put Fat Mark. She didn't refer to me that, that way out loud but I, I could see it. I think Fat Mark should be on Pee Wee Little League. I showed no interest in sports. I didn't care about sports. I was not guided that way. I never played catch with my dad because playing catch with my dad would have been like throwing the ball away. All right. So she puts Fat Mark on Pee Wee Little League. All right, now when you're fat and you're on Pee Wee Little League, you're in the outfield because no one's gonna hit that far. And if it does get out that far, it's gonna hit the ground. It's gonna just be bouncing. It's not a big deal. So Fat Mark is out in center field. Got a fat left fielder, got the fat right fielder. We're just out there being fat. We're the fat outfield. All right, maybe a little chatter, hitting the glove a little bit. Hey, bada bada, what does this even mean? Why are we saying this like this? You know, maybe a little chit chat with the other guy. Hey, you gonna get a Snickers or a snow cone after? I'm probably gonna get both. I'm gonna get a rainbow snow cone and try to eat it before it turns purple. All right. And look, I, I gotta be honest with you, I was not prone, you know, I'm fairly athletic, I could probably pull it off, but I was afraid of the ball, man. But he, like, at that time, like, you know, batting is how I would bat. <laughs> Catching. But this was me in the picture. <laughs> All right, so here's what happens, and this was a life-changing event. We're gonna try and work through this. I've made a promise to myself to work through this. I'm out there in center field, just being fat. We're having our time out there, all right? We're just kicking the dirt around. And then I heard that sound. It's unmistakable sound. Everyone knows that sound. It was the crack of a bat. And my first reaction was to look at the other guy. And then I look over at that guy, and he's pointing at the air. And there's a ball just suspended in the air coming towards Fat Mark. The coach is saying, get under it, get under it. And I'm backing up and I know this is like, I, yeah, you know, it's right there. And then in my memory, there's a sprinkler, all right? There, my, my heel caught on a sprinkler. I'm pretty sure it was there, all right? <laughs> I can't be sure. It might just be something I put in there to, you know, buffer the shame of what's going to happen next which is me falling backwards onto the ground and the ball bouncing off of my face. So I was under it. 
I got that part of the equation correct. <laughs> now, in my mind, at that point, the coach is yelling, get up, you fat fuck! Field it, fatty! Come on! Now, that's obviously revisionism. I don't think a coach <laughs> would talk that way to a fat kid, right? I probably made that up to make the shame worse. So now it's not really a ball game as much as it is a fat kid crying. Um, <laughs> Which on some level in my mind is like, well, it was all about me for that time. It would have been a better moment to be like, I caught it, I caught it, but like, yeah, that's all right. Like on some level, if you're that self-absorbed and you want to be the center of attention, it, it succeeded in that way. But 